right, man, welcome back. It's uh, it's been a minute since we've seen you. Yeah, almost a year. Was that by design? Were you healing something up? What was uh, what was the situation there? No, I've been healthy the whole year, ready to go. Just um, you know, took some time to find the uh, a fight, and um, I'm happy to be back and get back in there. Were they calling you with, with different guys and then it just wasn't a good fit for you? Or were you hitting them up saying, this is the kind of person I want and those kind of people uh, weren't ready? Apparently we just had a hard time getting somebody that wanted the fight. Um, and I know different people are looking for different things. So, uh, you know, I actually, the way this fight happened is uh, Vance Dinas uh, made a post on Instagram saying he wanted to fight me. So I immediately text my manager saying, you know, this is, uh, this guy's willing to do it. So let's see if we can make it happen. And uh, I'd given, you know, just try to throw names out there of people that might be looking for fights that had fights in a while. And uh, so finally this one worked out. Is that a, a feather in your cap when you hear that, that, that guys maybe don't want to fight you or don't think that you're a good matchup for them? And you say, hey, man, people look at me and they're, they're I don't it's, want to say scared. I never want to say scared in this business, but, but they know that maybe you're not a great matchup. Um, it sounds good until you can't get fights. Yeah. Then, then it just sucks. Because money sounds better. Right? Yeah, exactly. I'd rather make money than have people not want to fight me. Um, talk to me a little bit about about Estella Van Stevens. I mean, like you said, he sort of was mentioning your name, and it turned out to be a, a good matchup. But talk to me about what he brings to the table and what you've looked at from him. Um, he's good everywhere. You know, he's got a good ground game. Uh, wrestles pretty well. Striking solid. Yeah, he's, he's got a lot of power. I think that's the, the biggest thing about striking is he's got so much power. Um, and uh, he's hungry. You know, I think anytime you get somebody calling you out, um, they're hungry. They're trying to, to put their name out there. And I think that's great. You know, I think the biggest problem is that uh, I'm as hungry as he is. You know, I think people usually later on in their career, they kind of drop off the way they train, drop off their intensity level. And I never have. I want to keep getting better. And, um, you know, if anything, I'm hungrier than I've ever been because of that loss to Lovato about a year, two months ago, three months ago. So let's talk about that one a little bit because obviously two straight main events now Now for you. Obviously, you're somebody that the, that the brass here thinks highly of to put you in another main event. And that's a fight that, that I'm sure you want to get back. It's your only Bellator loss, right? Yeah. And that guy's the champ now. So do you, could this be a more perfect situation for you? Yeah, you know, um, I have all the respect in the world for him. Um, He's a monster. He's good everywhere. He's a very uh, respect, you know, respectable guy just in general. Um, so I think he's a good look, uh, good face for the sport. You know, I like to see him as the champ. But uh, but I want that title and I want that rematch. So um, everything I do is working back towards that. Do you feel like um, a win over a guy like Vance Dennis is the type of win that has you being able to to ask for that fight? right away or will it take another couple after that? I think it probably depends on the way I win. You know, I think it's going to come down to um, how everything goes Friday night. You know, if, uh, if I get an ugly win, maybe not, but I don't plan on getting an ugly win. So um, hopefully I go out there and I can make a statement Friday night and show that I'm ready. I know obviously you're not going to look past a guy like uh, Casella, but do you look back often at your fight against uh, Lovato and, and, and then look at what you're doing now and the things that maybe you've improved on since that fight? Yeah, um, I, I think I've, I hope and I think that I've become a different fighter since that fight. You know, I've, uh, I think the biggest mistake I was making that was not, it, it was paying off for a long time, but I had great training partners, but I was running my own camp. And uh, that Lovato fight, I think, showed in that third round. Um, that's probably not the best, best way for me to be doing things. So I've changed that up. I've got a great coach, um, added more guys to my, my team around me. and. Um, think that's going to be a big, big difference you see in the later rounds. How big of an adjustment was that for you to go from doing something one way for, for a lot of years and then changing it up to, I guess, maybe doing it the way that, that most fighters do? Um, it's been so much easier. You know, for years I was out at Dethrone Base Camp and we had a bunch of different coaches there, but really uh, Josh Koscheck kind of ran everything, but he had his own thing going too. So, you know, we, we had to all be accountable for each other or, you know, for ourselves really. And then, you know, I go to Wilmington and then, you know, we've really we got a boxing coach, but, um, you know, I was kind of the jiu-jitsu guy. Uh, Derek Brunson is a good training partner. Corey Crumpler is a good training partner. Jamie Pickett, uh, Trey Woods. But, you know, that was kind of the extent of what it was. It had great guys that do whatever I needed, but I had to line everything up and all that. And then at the end of the day, I go, did I do enough today? I better do another hard workout just to make sure. 
tendon. I'm getting injured. I'm always banged up. You know, um, the end of the camp, I don't, I'm not tapering right. And now to have a guy uh, like Jeff Jimmo who's um, telling me, okay, you're done for that. You've done plenty. Or, you know, we're not going to do a 30-minute cardio session today. We're going to do a 15-minute cardio session. That makes a big difference, I think. And it's just uh, peace of mind huge when, that, when you can do that, do it that way. Do you feel like that will pay out for you on Friday night then too? I think so. I think, um, you know, I've actually peaked up every camp I've ever had is I've never had somebody as a coach who really knew as much about it. So it's always been, um, you know, let's recover fight week and you'll feel good and you go fight. And that's always worked well for me. But this has actually been, you know, programmed to peak at the right time. And I feel it this week. I've never felt it this fight week. So I'm really excited about that. Got a way that you want to get things done on Friday night? I mean, is, uh, is this a situation where you, you're saying, man, I really would love to get on a highlight reel? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I'd love to uh, get out of there in two minutes. But I think uh, he's going to have something to say about that. And he's a very tough guy that uh, uh, I think is survives very well. So I think we're going to probably look at a, a pretty tough, high pace fight. So I think he pushes, pushes the pace a lot. So it's never going to slow down. It's never going to be a dull fight. Um, so I think, uh, but I expect it to be, you know, a hard fall walk.